Welcome. We'll start with class eight geography, chapter one, that is resources. Now, the complete class eight geography focuses on the various types of resources. In the first chapter, we'll be understanding what are resources, the basics of resources, and the basic classification for understanding the resources. Now, when we try to understand the basic question, what are resources and why are they important? I can say anything which is of use for us is a resource. For example, water is a resource because we use water. Similarly, I can say textbooks, books, paper, vegetable, fruits, all these trees, are, all these are resources because we use them in our daily life in one way or the other. And based on the utility or the usability of something, we classi classify them as resources. Now, whenever you have resource, this resource is a kind of value addition. So it gives us some kind of value and value means worth. So it's a kind of uh, valuable for us in one way or the another. For example, can you imagine a life without water? Can you imagine a life without trees or a life without forest? Similarly, this value, which is the worth of a resource can be either classified as economic value or simply an aesthetic value. When I say aesthetic value, that means a value that adds to its beauty or the natural surrounding. For example, trees are important because they add to the uh, beauty around the earth. Or I can say they have an economic importance because they provide us oxygen, then they provide us fruits and vegetables. So you have kind of various uh, ne necessary elements or essential elements that you get from the tree. So that is the value addition. Now, sometimes the economic value is added in such a manner that there is a kind of patent that comes up. This patent is a term that is used to indicate a kind of branding for something that you have innovated or discovered on your own and you want that to be in your name. So there are various patents released by India, United States and globally and those patents kind of work around the various values for the resources. Now, how does a substance become a resource? With time and technology, we convert or we can say with in incorporation of time and technology, a substance can become a resource. For example, why, how does discovery of fire help us? Discovery of fire, when initially started, no one knew the use for it. However, now it is used for cooking, it's used for burning, it's used for fossil fuels, so on and so forth. Similarly, wheel, the invention of wheel, when it was discovered, no one knew that it would become a part of day-to-day -day life. And nowadays, wheels are used for each and every transportation most of the transportation vehicles that we use. Again, water has been used to convert it into electricity and we have hydroelectric power generation which is available from water. So every substance with given time and technology has the capacity to convert into a resource. Now when we classify about the types of resources, broadly speaking we can say there are three major types natural resources, human made resources and human resources. When I say natural resources are those resources which come directly from the nature. So green plants, trees, vegetables, fruits are natural resources. Human made resources are the resources that we have built up. For example, bridges, roads, machinery, vehicles, all these are built with use of technology. And finally, you have the most important resource that is the human resource itself that is we the people with knowledge and skill have the quantity and the ability to work around various issues and development of human resources is what is known as HRD or human resource development. It aims at improving the quality of people's skill. So how better, uh, how we can bring betterment in the various fields is what is governed under HRD. So this is the basic classification to understand the types of resources. Now let's move on to a detailed classification for natural resource. I can say natural resources can be classified based on various aspects. So based on the development, I can say there can be actual resources or potential resources. Actual resources are those resources which, which are actually present on the earth. So for example, I can say 
availability of coal in germany is rural area availability of iron ore in kudramukh in india so all these are actual resources which are known and present however there are potential resources the entire quantity of which is unknown for example we say we have huge ur uranium reserves in ladakh region in india in the past windmills were considered as a potential resource but now you have numerous windmills installed in the regions of netherland in india you have in gujarat and tamil nadu coast you have numerous windmills and these have become uh, these are now not a potential resource but have become an actual resource now because we really know the presence of these resources so this is what is the actual resource and the potential resource now based on origin of resource we can say there can be two types of resources these can be either biotic or abiotic biotic are those which are derived from living plants or animals so they are de derived from living organisms however abiotic are non living so examples of abiotic include soil rocks minerals etc now the next classification is based on distribution i can say some of the resources are present throughout the globe for example air water these are present throughout the globe and the things which are present universally are known as ubiquitous so these are known as ubiquitous resources or resources which are present globally i can find find them in each and every corner of the earth on the other hand you have localized resources which are present in specific regions for example you have copper resources iron resources and similar other mineral resources which are present in specific locations so you have either localized resources or ubiquitous resources based on the distribution of the resources finally there is another important classification based on its use i can say it's renewable resources or non renewable resources renewable resources are those which can be renewed and reused one after the another for example uh, sunlight water wind waves these are some of the renewable uh, resources which can be used and which can be replenished however there are other resources which have limited stocks and get exhausted so once they are exhausted we no more have them a common example for non renewable resource would be coal oil reserves iron ore deposits so all these are non renewable resources that means once exhausted you cannot bring them again so we have another classification that is renewable and non renewable now based on this we also have a common term which is stock of resource stock of resource implies the available amount of resource that is there for use so whatever amount of resource we have for use is known as stock and the distribution of resources throughout the world depends on various parameters like the terrain climate altitude and so on and so forth now another important criteria uh, for understanding resources how do we conserve our resources or how do we uh, protect our resources a common example would be i can say not to switch on a tap uh, if you are not using it so running water is a kind of wastage so that's a kind of effort to conserve the resources a very simple example however there are other ways where you can conserve and nowadays a focus has been a shift towards renewable energy we have covered the details in the class on renewable energy and target 2022 where we have covered the uh, conservation techniques for renewable energy in detail now another important term when we talk about resource conservation or resource uh, uh, sustainability is sustainable development the word sustainable development itself means using the present day resources in such a manner that they are available for the future generations to come that means if you have say a stock of uh, 10 kg i am taking a very small example uh, suppose you have a stock of 10 kg of uranium you have to use that resource or that stock in such a manner that it is available after 50 years some of it is available and after say 2000 years also some of it is available that means you are using this resources or uh, this resource in a sustainable manner so all the renewable resources that we have are definitely sustainable so sunlight coming from the sun 
the wind the water is all sus uh, sustainable that would be available for generation so if we draw uh, technology that uses renewable energy at the maximum we are definitely conserving our resources because if we are using energy from say water that is hydroelectric energy we are in other ways conserving the coal so you have conservation when you use renewable energy again the diversity of the life is conserved on the earth and the damage to the natural environment is minimized by using renewable sources now what are the basic principles of sustainable development the basic principle is we must respect and care for all forms of life the aim is to improve the quality of life with minimum uh, interference or minimum damage to the existing resources that we have minimum depletion of the natural resources that exist and changing our practices our way of use of resources would be one of an important method to use or to preserve the resources for future generations and finally enable people and enable communities to have their own environment and develop their own best use for natural resources or renewable resources so with this we cover the first chapter we'll be covering other chapters on resources uh, ncert class 8 in the further topics for any doubts you can leave those as comment below the video have a good day ahead